You know, there are some things we don't truly appreciate until they're gone. And we take them for granted. Things such as our time. Our youth. Or this YouTube channel. So it'd be really great to subscribe and turn on those notifications while these videos are still around. And you can learn more about all things pharmacy. Share them. Tell your friends. Before it's too late, spread the... Oh, come on, don't be like that. Come back. Okay, maybe that was a bit of a stretch, but most certainly one of the things we take for granted the most while we have it is our health. Welcome back to the Community Pharmacy Services series, where we try to understand the services provided in Community Pharmacy and the value of pharmacy itself. Today, we'll touch upon another service that all pharmacies have to offer, public health promotion, or in other words, promotion of healthy lifestyles. When we think of health, it isn't just the absence of disease. It's a state of complete physical, mental and social well-being as defined by who? who? Sorry, that's short for the World Health Organization. It is one of pharmacy's essential services to promote healthy lifestyles. The service specifies that they do this in two main ways. Number one, campaign-based service. Pharmacies are obliged to take part in up to six national or local health campaigns a year, and in some instances, they might be required to record data relative to these campaigns. These campaigns could be on a variety of different health topics, and the idea is pharmacy may have access and contact with hard-to-reach sectors of the population who might not otherwise be aware of health promotion activities. With a campaign-based service, the pharmacy team proactively take part in increasing public awareness of the current campaign. An example might be a national campaign on getting flu vaccines in the winter. The campaign set by the public health body. They provide resources and support materials with key messages out to the pharmacies. And the pharmacies then relay this to the patients. They might have posters in the pharmacy. Or the staff members may be wearing badges encouraging them to get vaccinated. The idea is to engage with the public and get the conversation started. Now a patient has come in for something else, but after seeing all this flu information, starts to wonder about what the process is for getting the flu vaccine. The pharmacy staff are there on hand to provide information, advice and support relevant to that campaign. Number 2. Prescription Linked Interventions The other way pharmacies are encouraged to promote healthy lifestyles is from the people and the prescriptions they present with. They can get an idea of patients in particular risk groups, such as those who have diabetes, are at risk of coronary heart disease, those who smoke, and those who are overweight. These patient groups are an example of those that pharmacy has a role in providing opportunistic healthy lifestyle advice to. Here, the pharmacy would give advice verbally, but may back it up with other information such as internet links or leaflets, and signposting, if necessary, to other healthcare professionals. Do you see how the different services link in together? The pharmacy themselves also have systems in place to make sure appropriate advice is given to patients and that appropriate records can be made of this. Now let's think about this when it works. A pharmacy receives a prescription. And from looking at the fingers of Mr. Smith who presented the prescriptions, and the general smell when they came in, they have an idea that he might be a smoker. The pharmacist with their detective skills starts a conversation with him, and brings in the topic of smoking, asking if they've ever considered quitting. As it happens, Mr. Smith does want to, but doesn't really know how. As it happens, the pharmacy offers a smoking cessation service, where Mr. Smith has free checkups with the pharmacist to discuss the options available and obtain nicotine replacement therapy free of charge on the scheme. After getting a better understanding of Mr. Smith and his needs, Mr. Smith then completes the course with the pharmacist and eventually goes from 20 cigarettes a day to stopping entirely. You can see the knock-on effect that a public health campaign can have. And here we're seeing how pharmacy is offering a proactive approach in engaging with the public to promote their health. On a local level, pharmacy is promoting key messages to the public to improve their health and lives and well-being. But on a bigger scale where this works, 
pharmacy once again proves its value by playing its part in proactively getting the healthy message out there in a wider scale and promoting healthy living to the nation. And when you think about it, who is better placed than qualified healthcare professionals that you probably see the most often of the bunch? The ones whose doors are pretty much always open. Many thanks for watching. Please like, share and subscribe to this channel for more pharmacy related things coming your way and hopefully I'll see you next week.